Hello, today I'm going to show you the Fremantle pre-CT workup on a patient with a previous mitral annual plastic ring being evaluated for transcaptor mitral valve in ring replacement. Here's the workup. Here you can see that here, the annual plastic ring located at the mitral annulus, and you first place a dot across the mitral valve and you click the mitral assessment so that on the next screen, you'll see that the axis needs to be positioned right across at the LV apex. And then you proceed to measure the endoplasty. So first of all, you need to drop down the booming artifact. You can see on the left side. Unfortunately, with this study, you can see that there's quite a bit of motion artifact at the end systolic phase. Actually, this study had a better resolution at the anti-slog phase, but you have to make sure on the CT protocol to, to have the ancestry on the systolic phase being the highest resolution to minimize the motion artifact rather than in diastole. So the gating and the protocol is very important. So we're going to define the mitral analyst from the mitral annuloplasty ring. And so the first thing you do, you just trace out the annuloplasty ring where you can see this patient has a complete ring and can see that it's radiolucent. And so you can just trace along here until you complete the tracing and you can see that right there. Next, you can go define the aortic valve just like what you do for a TAVR workup. And you can see some of my uh, videos that I've shown in the my YouTube channel and Structural Heart to show how to work up the tower, which is similar to this. You put your open red circle by setting the left sinus, and then on the top left panel, put a dot at the bottom of the left sinus, and then you rotate counterclockwise to the right sinus, and you do the same thing at the base of the right sinus, and you rotate again counterclockwise to the non-sinus, and you put a dot at the base of the non-sinus. Now you have the my aortic valve annulus. So now you just fine tune to make sure you're in the exactly the middle. So you just click on the dot directly, you go up and down, you can see that this one needs to go and move a little bit a little bit clockwise. And then you can see also here, the red dot, this looks pretty good, maybe a little bit counterclockwise. And then here you need to make sure you have your LVOT, new LVOT by putting the new LVOT center line appropriately along the interior septum, so interventricular septum, and you then on the perpendicular view, you wanna make sure you're in the center line of the ventricle. So you can see that here, because this is gonna be important how you calculate this, and you can see how I had to center this, and you can see how this is now more or less center into the ventricular cavity. And you can see this here as well on how this. Now this patient has a very dilated LV cavity and makes it a little easier to look at some of the, to do the center line. So once you have that, you click confirm and now you go refine your endoplasty ring. And you can see that most of the rings are saddle shaped, right? That's how it's designed to kind of freeze the mitral annulus in a certain part of the cardiac cycle, but you'll need to make sure that your plane is along the annuloplasty in terms of the same height. So it's gonna get projected to a certain dimension but you need to at least put it into a certain red line relative to the plane here. So, so you can certainly add more lines and you can see that this is indeed a, a shadow shape structure that you've seen here. Okay, so at the same time here, you can see on the top left panel, you need to make sure that 
your dots are within the anaplasty ring. And of course, uh, it would be very helpful to know what size this anaplasty ring is from either the operative report or from by calling the manufacturer. Now, remember for the mitral valve and ring procedure, you have to have a complete ring. Otherwise, if you only have an anoplasty band, there's a risk of migration because there's no anchoring on the anterior portion of the mitral valve because these bands are typically going from trigone to trigone only. So you need to have a complete ring in place. So once you see this, I will click confirm. And then what you see now is this is the aortic valve annulus. And so now you can see on the top right panel, the free chamber view representing that. And I would definitely then go into to make sure that you are at the 0.0, .0 mark, which is the annular plane that you have defined. Sometimes it's more difficult to achieve that. So this is maybe good enough in the interest of time. So you can see that now you would put this two dots and when you right click, link analysis info plus show info. And you can see that this is the C, kind of a CC dimension or the maximal CC dimension. And you have your AP dimension as well. So you want to be able to match that aligning this. So you can see this is a probably a 28 millimeter annual plus T ring. You can see the AP dimension is quite small, only 18. Your area is 430. And so depending on whether it's rigid or semi-rigid ring, it might not expand or circularize completely. So I think what we know for fact is that the smaller the annual plus T ring, the more rigid it is. So the ability to circularize with a smaller ring is going to be more difficult than a larger ring. So let's put a virtual valve across. So in this case, you may end up needing a 26 millimeter S3 valve. And you can right click here when you go to the top pink corner and then you can snap to valve and make it coaxial. So, and then what you do is you position the ring, so the, the, valve, the safe in free valve rather towards the ventricular direction, such as this more like 80, 20 or 90, 10 is a target deployment. Now keep in mind with the valve and ring procedure, you have the anterior leaflet still that will be displayed forward, displaced forward. And that is where you get the new LVOT. So depending on your final positioning, your new LVOT might change, but this is kind of virtual conserved estimate. You can see that here. So I would typically is to add these pictures now to the report and put 26 S3 MVIR. I mean, let's say a 28 millimeter ring. And here you can tell also this way, you can do, do the aortomitral angle. You use the angle tool to draw the angle. So this is 121 degrees. And you can label that as such. And then you can do your new LVOT, which is click on the new LVOT dot here. And then you take the parallax out of this virtual safe in free valve. And then you go to the smallest portion of this. And this is where it is. And you can see in this particular patient, because the ventricle is so dilated, you're not going to have an LVOT, new LVOT issue. And you can see how I do trace it out. And then you right click here to show your new LVOT. Now, at 30% and that would be number one. Now don't be fooled by this is the narrowest portion that's the smallest. If you go up, now this is obviously an extreme case. You right click and delete this, I'll show you. This is where the new LVOT might be as you go higher up. So this is the LVOT, obviously. And then you start 
you can see how it changes. So sometimes the new alveolar team may actually be smaller in between the native aortic annulus and the narrowest part of the outflow trap that you saw on one view. So I'm just gonna show you here, for example, this could potentially be smaller than what I previously drawn because this is further into the outflow trap towards the analyst. So you imagine the cavity space will shrink. So you can certainly do more than one new LVLT calculation to be very conservative. So after that, you go back to the mitral annular interface and you can actually go here in the hockey puck view. And when you right slide to reduce the contrast, you see, you see now how the valve may sit inside your ring and you can see how constrained it would potentially be. And when you have to like a more semi-rigid, even rigid ring will be very difficult to circularize. So even semi-rigid, when you have small ring, you can match it here on either side of the commissure where the ring sits might get paraval leak because it's not able to seal with the transcapital valve. So that's something important to consider and keep in mind of. You can certainly look at multiple different angles in terms of deployment, in terms of you know, serving the coax coaxiality. You can take a picture of this, this REO, and you can even drop the valve and you can just show how it might look like on fluoro. And of course, you can also show how it looks on the on false view, just to illustrate the point. So here's the report. You can see that I have the valve, the ring dimensions and how the valve will fit within that. You have the area here, you have the perimeter as well, which is 78.1. And then you have your aorta mitral angle. This is a typical view to look for interaction with septum. And then obviously also as well after the new LVOT. So you can save this report and share with your heart team. And you can save the session as well. So I hope that you find this helpful and I will see you next time.